What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Hairbender, and I'm back with another tutorial for you guys today, featuring my boy Kevin. Today, we're gonna be doing a mid drop fade with waves, so stay tuned. As usual, I'm starting off the process by just combing everything out, making sure that the hair is laid and um, lifted off of the scalp so that I can get a nicer cut. I tried to slow the video down more this time because I noticed before that it might have been hard for you guys to see what was going on because of how fast it was. So here I'm going in with my clippers, no guard, lever closed, and I'm going above the ear and then dropping it down towards the bottom of the neck area to create that um, drop effect. Notice when I start the fade towards the front of the head, I'm going below where the C-cups would end because you still want to make sure that the curve is still there. To finish off the balding phase of the hair cutting process, I'm going to go in with my fabulous trimmers and I'm just cleaning up the hairs that was below the line that I initially made so that it actually is bald down there. Once you've successfully created the ball guideline, you're going to take your lever and open it up all the way and flick up about a half an inch above the previous guideline that you made and continue to follow that drop pattern that you created in the first guideline. Right here I'm also doing the beard right now. and. I just use the same fade and steps that I use for the rest of the head. Um, if you're new to cutting hair, I would just focus on the drop fade first and then do the beard afterwards and just use the same fade and steps that you used for the rest of the hair. Once I finish uh, making my first two guidelines, I'm going to knock down the hair with a one guard closed, making sure that everything is even all over before I finish the fading process. I want you guys to notice how I keep on combing the hair as I'm knocking it down because that lifts the hair more and more as you're cutting it down so that way you don't miss any spots and leave it uneven. For future reference I'm going to get a better angle of this for you guys but what I have here is my lever halfway closed, it's on notch 3 if you have the Babyliss clippers and I'm just flicking up halfway between my ball guideline and the second guideline that I made, just fading out the ball guideline that we initially made. Remember the first step we did was go and create the guideline with my lever closed with these clippers. So now I have it on notch 2 and I'm fading out the bottom guideline. This should knock it out completely. If it's not, you might have to do some detailed work later on with your lever closed or whatever you need, honestly. You kind of have to eyeball that part. But right here, I'm flicking at the bottom line slightly so I don't push the fade up too high and I'm knocking out that ball guideline completely. Once you knock out the ball guideline, you're going to put on your .5 guard closed and you're going to flick up, not too much, but just barely at the, sec the top of the second guideline that we had initially made 
and you're gonna still follow the drop pattern that you created in your guidelines and go up I'd say about a quarter of an inch at the most you don't want to go up too high or else you're gonna push the fade up too high and if you don't have a 0.5 guard just use the zero guard it's pretty much the same to me I use them interchangeably now with my one guard I'm going in about one guard closed I'm going in about another quarter inch above the guideline the bulk that you see at the top of the fade and just thinning it out more and more as I get closer to the top of the head now to connect the fade to the top of the hair you're gonna use the one guard open and just flick at the top of it you don't want to create another guideline so make sure that you're being delicate but flick at the top of that line and just thin out that the rest of the bulk honestly I probably could have left the fade how it was but I'm going back in and I'm doing detail work with my lever open no guard and just finishing up areas that need more work I know I said it in one of my other videos, but I like to do one side of the head at a time because it's more efficient in my opinion and it helps you focus on one area at a time to get the best look in that certain area. But right here I'm just doing the back of the head, on that side of it at least, and I'm just doing the same steps as I did on the rest of the fade. And I'm also cleaning up areas of the other part that I faded already. Try to avoid changing your steps on each side of the head. You don't want to walk. You don't want them walking around with two different sides or two different fades on each side of their head. Then you're gonna have them looking crazy. You don't want that, especially if they can relieve you reviews and stuff. That's just that's not good for them or you. Now that we finished the fade, I'm gonna prep the hairline by knocking it down and wiping it out with alcohol to get all the oils and dirt that's on the skin off so that I can make the lineup as clean as possible. Now that the skin is clean, dry, and everything, I'm using my clippers and I'm just tapping and going around the shape that was already there pretty much. You could see where his beard was lined up. So I'm tapping and going, not going too uh, hard on the face because it's a sensitive area. So you don't want to do that and leave them with cuts or anything. To do the C cups, I create a mark at the top of it and then I go down to the temple and I connect the dots basically. That's how I do my C cups. There's a lot of ways that people do them, but I think that that's the best way to do it so you don't end up pushing up their hairline. I notice a lot of people leave their vertical bars uneven and I think it starts with the C cups honestly because sometimes their one side will be higher than the other so make sure that you're using your mirrors and you're just making sure that the C cups are even before you even start touching the front lineup. I'm gonna say it again make sure you're using your mirrors to make sure that everything is even because the eye will lie to you but a mirror won't. But that's besides the point here I'm going in to create the lineup. 
I start in the middle of the lineup, work my way all the way to the edge, right where the vertical vertical bar starts. And then I do my vertical bars on one side. And then I start in the middle of the hairline and do the same exact thing over again. But notice how, I'm, how delicate I'm being. I'm not pressing too hard on the skin. The hairline, like any skin on the face is more sensitive than other areas. So you just want to make sure that you're not pressing too hard because that's how you cut clients and you don't want them looking like they got in a fight or nothing, you know? Now that the hairline's as straight as I could get it naturally, I'm going in with my dye. I'm using a, I'm just using a random business card to use to guide it, but I'm using my air compressor and my dye, and I'm spraying just right at the edge of the hairline where I've already lined up to darken it up and just make everything look picture perfect. Once I put the dye on, I reinforced the lineup again with my trimmers, just making sure that none of it leaked or anything and that everything is just as straight as it needs to be before the dye truly dries. I know a lot of people don't like to do this, but I think that it just adds a nice touch to the haircut. So I'm using my tan Barber Magic Pencil, and I'm just going around the edge of the hairline, not on the actual hairline, but just before it, and outlining it. I won't normally do it on a beard if they don't have like a true beard or anything, but in this case he does. So I'm going down to the beard a lot. I haven't yet outlined it yet, but I'm lining up where the outline would be and making sure that everything is even before I hit it with my razor. I don't necessarily use my clippers on the face all the time because it can be very, they can be too sharp for the face, especially the cheeks because the skin is a lot looser there. So I like to use my razor instead and just create the lineup that way. You literally have a blade on somebody's skin right now like you could cut them so easily so make sure that you're being very careful and stretching the skin as much as you can so that it's not loose and you don't accidentally cut them and also don't apply too much pressure with the razor you don't really need to do anything just let the razor do its job itself just guide the razor at an angle I'd say about 45 degrees and lightly go over the skin don't do too much For the bottom of the beard, I'm using the same principles as before, just following the guidelines that were already there pretty much. I'm not sure if y'all could see them, but I could see them because he gets his hair cut pretty frequently. But I'm just going around the bottom of the beard, lining that up, and that's 
not going too hard on it because that's also a sensitive area you don't want to press too hard because a lot of the time the skin is so loose down there that it'll snag on the clippers and yeah you don't want that to happen it hurts the client In the future, I'm going to do an uh, actual eyebrow tutorial for you guys because I feel like I never give a good detailed description. But here I'm just using my clippers, I mean my trimmers to line up the eyebrows before I reinforce this shape with my razor. Essentially when you're doing eyebrows, you just want to make sure that you follow their natural lineup. You don't want to like cut too much hair off and make them too thin or anything because a lot of people struggle with growing eyebrows in the first place. Not him, but in general. Comcast Business and Mobile and see if you can save up to $500 on wireless. God, God. Wait, your boy is back. Fresh. I'm okay. Only paying for what you need. Bro, taking selfies. Bro, taking selfies for the grandma, right? I'm about to, man. You get cuss like this.